As the show progresses each season, we are introduced to fewer new themes. It's a normal thing to do, since lots of new themes each season would be too much musical information, and this way we grow used to the ones that have been with us since the previous seasons. So for this video, first I'll show the new themes, and then we'll see some scenes that use the themes that we already know. And let's start with my favorite theme from this season, John and Ygritte's love theme. We hear it a few times as their relationship grows stronger, with the main appearance being when they reach the top of the wall. We can also hear it during their intimate scenes or when she finds John after his betrayal. You know some things. I know I love you. I know you love me. to go home now. Musically, it combines the two main ideas that build the music for the Night's Watch and the Wildlings. Let's remember them just in case. While the Wildlings theme was built using a minor third, the Night's Watch has a major third that has a different sound. From the starting note, we can count keys on the piano to find the correspondent note. A minor third is three notes away from the starting point, while the major third is four. John and Ygritte's theme combines both intervals when it begins, signaling that this relationship is between a wildling and a crow. After that, some of the melodic phrases it does could make reference to the B section of House Dark. It could be because Jon Snow has Stark blood, but I think it's a bit of a stretch. Other themes also use notes that are inside this range, and it could perfectly be unrelated, as Jon's bloodline is quite irrelevant in this relationship. And talking about major or minor thirds sends me directly to talk about the new music that surrounds the wall. During the climb and when Jon escapes, we hear the Night's Watch theme with a few added notes. Let's see if you can identify what's going on. When we looked at the theme for the Night's Watch and the video for season 1, we saw that because of the intervals between them, the melody has the same three notes and can go on forever. Here, however, when we reach the third note of the melody that would send us back to the first one, we move a minor third instead, adding another one just after that.
Just like the love theme for John and Igrid, the music tells us that we are mixing crows and wildlings. I don't consider this a new theme because it's just a variation of an existing one. When John leaves Igrid, we hear the new version. But when he gets to Castle Black, the old theme appears. Now without the added notes because he is no longer among the wildlings. Gently. Moving over to Alanister, Jamie develops his own theme this season. It leaves a few hints throughout the season, but its main appearance is when we discover the complexity that surrounds him with his speech to Brienne. Remember that House Lannister's theme was constantly doing big melodic jumps, because here it's much more difficult to find them. The beginning is built by using notes that are very close to each other, but the second part has those big jumps of House Lannister. As we discover that Jamie's reality is not as simple as it may seem on the outside, the music tells us the same. The burden that he carries because of his fame, the pressure from his dad, everything mixes in this theme that does not appear many times, but is the one that sounds when he sees Cersei again. Only two new themes missing, and we'll go to ask the poor to hear the music of the Unsullied. Funnily enough, and a coincidence in my eyes, it has the same two notes of the Wildlings theme, but the key element here is a 5-4 time signature. In a similar way to the Dothraki, the percussion of the theme is as important as the melody, something that only happens with these two themes. With Daenerys, the incorporation of the 5-4 is a way of shifting the power of a scene. For example, here we start with a 4-4 time signature. that later turns into the 4-5 of the Unsullied, meaning that Daenerys now has taken control over the situation. And you threatened their mother. Take the gold. And lastly, this season reveals the theme for Davos. With only one exception, we always hear it alongside him or making reference to him. And it's first presented to us when he appears on screen. As Davos becomes a much more important character, he develops his own musical theme. His rejection of Melisandre's influence on Stannis makes him different musically. You knew I counseled restraint. You came to hear me say it because you believe it yourself. You're not a man who slaughters innocence for gain or glory. And now it's time to look at all the themes and how they appear this season. 
I cannot look at every single one because some of them just appear when the character or thing they represent is on screen, and because the video would be as long as the season itself. Instead, I look at themes that have an interesting development or that are worthy to mention. So since we were with Davos, let's look at the theme for the Lord of Light. In previous seasons, it always appeared with Stannis or Melisandre, but in this one, it expands and sounds whenever this god or magic is mentioned. Sorcerer. Hello, my old friend. It's been a long time. I have no doubt the revenge you want will be yours in time. Show us the truth. Strike this man down if he is guilty. Give strength to his sword if he is true. Lord of Light. Also, for the third straight season, we hear the mixture of Danny's theme with the main title as the season concludes. But there are two other appearances that are very interesting to look at, and both are related to the Starks. During the Red Wedding, we hear it a couple of times, and it signals that the Game of Thrones is over for Rob. It sounded when he joined, and also when he dies. Mother. The Lannisters send their regards. Also, after the Red Wedding scene, the credits roll without any music at all. The only time it happens in the show. The other meaningful appearance of the main title is related to Bran, someone who hadn't been associated with the theme so far. As he goes beyond the wall, we hear the main title and his house's music. Bran's role in the Game of Thrones so far is different from the one that other major characters are playing, but the music is telling us that he'll have an important role. And during his journey, we hear the Three-Eyed Raven theme that was introduced to us in the first season. I'm right here with you. What's happening? I'm right here with you. Georgian also has an interesting scene where the conspiracy theme seems to be playing. He's having one now. <laughs> it doesn't make much sense here, since that music represents the conflict between two families. However, in this season, the theme changes name and comes to represent one character, as he delivers one of the most iconic quotes in the entire show. Chaos is a ladder. Many who try to climb it fail, but never get to try again. Moving over to Theon, this season we still get the occasional mixture of House Stark and House Greyjoy as he talks about his past or how he did not kill Bran and Rickon. My real father lost his head at King's Landing. I made a choice. And as he is stripped away of his identity, his house's theme gets broken, and we never hear both the ostinato and the melody together. You first? Where are we? The North. Too vague. Deepwood Moss. We only hear it complete when Yara goes to rescue his brother. I'm going to march on the Dreadfort. I'm going to find my little brother. And I'm going to bring him home. A broken version of the theme appears when Rob is about to execute someone. It draws a parallelism with the previous season, when Theon had to execute someone at Winterfell. Blood of the first men flows through my veins as much as yours, boy. I fought the Mad King. For your... It's a hard task for both of them, and the eternal conflict that it generates unites them. It's interesting that so far, Theon had been the one drawn to the theme of his other house, but here it goes the other way. 
two love themes that come back are Robert and Lianas and Tyrion and Shays. Robert and Lianas is associated once again with Cersei, which could mean that the theme is really about Robert and Cersei true loves. Whenever he was with me, he was happy. And no one can take that away from you, not even Joffrey. How it feels to have someone. But the most interesting one is Tyrion and Shays. Last season, it only appeared with them, although they had one scene with the theme of Rob and Talisa. This season, their love theme expands and it represents two marriages, Tyrion and Sansa. And Edmure with one of Walter Frey's daughters. Delight to me, my lady. The appearance with Sansa makes sense since the marriage is a conflict between Tyrion and Shay, who truly love each other. However, when we hear it during the Red Wedding, it's a bit more confusing. I guess that Rob and Talisa's theme could make more sense since that plotline is closer to them. I don't know why Raman Javadi decided to use it here, and if you have any ideas, please let me know in the comment section. Finally, in this season, we're introduced to two other diegetic songs like The Reigns of Castamere but I don't consider this one musical themes because they only appear as a song and nothing more. House Lannister's theme, for example, makes countless appearances as background music in many scenes, while these two songs don't. One is Shireen's song, It's Always Summer Under the Sea. The birds have scales and the fish take wing I know, I know Oh, oh, oh And the other one is The Bear and the Maiden Fair being sung by the Boltons. From there to here, from here to there, all black and brown and covered with hair, he smelled that girl in the summer air, the bear, the bear, and the maiden fair. And this concludes the analysis for season three. Hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for season four.